Drunk drivers kill nearly 10,000 people in the U.S. every year, according to Mothers Against Drunk Drivers. And while police often make arrests, drunk drivers strike again and again. As Rob Masson reports, a new ball and chain could save lives. It's been uh, 10 years now since uh, my little boy got killed. It was a 2004 tragedy that still haunts Dwayne Kearney. Yeah, he'd be about 12 years old now. Um, I think about it all the time. Kearney's son, Dwayne Jr., was killed by a drunk driver in the front yard of their Lacombe home. And the driver, James Silve, was a repeat offender. He was released two weeks before the crash happened for DWI. Dwayne Jr. was just two at the time of his death, just one of nearly 400 alcohol-related fatalities in Louisiana each year. Donald, placing you under arrest for suspicion of DWI. Courts often see the same drunk drivers one, two, maybe three times, and judges are stumped as to what type of punishment might change behavior. Do you really want your children out on the road or with somebody like you driving? Kearney advocated for jail time for the offender who killed his son and got it. But jail is oftentimes not the solution, especially if no one's been hurt. Alex Lambert is a two-time DWI offender, most recently picked up on Clearview Parkway last March. I stopped drinking an hour before I left the bar. I drank water, and I think I had seven beers from 5.30 to about 1. It's warming up right now. The judge forced Lambert to get the interlock ignition device, which has been around for nearly a decade. If I don't do it correctly, I'll have to redo it again. But the interlock is not foolproof. Violators can have a friend blow for them, or a drunk driving offender can drive someone else's car. This is my jewelry. Um, this is the scram bracelet right here. For that reason, Lambert was ordered to wear a relatively new piece of hardware called the Scram X. This is the device that measures the sweat. The Scram X measures an offender's sweat, and if he or she has had an alcoholic beverage, it will be detected. To monitor that for what we call transdermal alcohol, which is essentially alcohol that's released through the skin, which is the last part of the metabolic process of your body dispensing with alcohol that you consume. The device takes a reading every 30 minutes, stores it, and sends it to a monitoring station once a day via radio waves and the internet. He has an illustration to show the judge of when the alcohol consumption began, how long it continued. Mainly in Owens Parish traffic court is where it started, and then its use has grown, and then today, um, most courts and judges in southeast Louisiana, again, depending on their caseload and when they feel it's effective, apply it. Judge Rebecca Olivier believes it's a tremendous tool and she's not alone. Around 250 people in southeast Louisiana are wearing the alcohol monitor bracelet 24-7. We're getting them therapy in a substance abuse program, but um, if they have this scram device on, it's going to keep them from using alcohol while they're showing up to the counseling sessions. And they are virtually impossible to remove. Once the clip is put on and it's locked into place, the only way you can get this strap off is to break this clip. Kearney believes if the drunk driver who killed his son was wearing a scram device, his son's life might have been saved. If the scram would have been in place then, yeah, I think most definitely it would have made a difference. Mothers Against Drunk Driving like it too. It's a great tool, and I've heard some positive results from people who have had them on that they helped them to live the life without having to have a drink because they were forced to do it. But offenders like Lambert complain about the costs. $150 a month coupled with the interlock fees, lawyer fees, and a doubling of his insurance due to the DWIs. Between the breathalyzer and the bracelet, I might have to file Chapter 11 bankruptcy. If you have the money to purchase the alcohol, you certainly have the money to pay for the device. And though Lambert says he's had to take out a loan, he admits his probation requirements are better than jail. Um, I, of course, did not want to go to jail for six months, and I, I chose this. While judges say slip-ups are rare, the alcohol monitors do have limitations when it comes to keeping tabs on certain types of impaired drivers. Not all... Um, offenders, impaired drivers, are alcohol, and that might be the only reason why we don't use it more so. So far, urine or blood tests are the only way to monitor those with other addictions. 17 years ago, it was predominantly alcohol. 
Um, and over the years, we've seen a, a serious increase of the impaired drivers, either being a combination of alcohol and drugs or drugs. While the Scram technology monitors consumption 24-7, it's limited to alcohol detection, and the results don't register immediately. Typically, from the time that alcohol is beginning to be consumed, if I had to give an average, it's between two and four hours after that before we see alcohol detections on the device due to the what we call a transdermal lag and or a metabolic delay in just your body processing alcohol. And then it's getting the data from the bracelet into the network so it can be analyzed and everything can be done. So as far as real time or immediate um, notifications, similar like what people think with GPS or something like that, the technology is not set up for that. Though the Scram device has limitations, this offender says it's changed his behavior. I will definitely never drink and drive again. For everything that I've gone through, I, I will never ever do it again. I will catch a cab or I will walk. But Lambert will remain under court supervision for the next year, just to be sure. From Metairie, Rob Manson, Fox 8 News. Um, Thanks, Rob. Judge Rebecca Oliver heard Lambert's hardship case Tuesday afternoon and said the alcohol monitor bracelet can be removed. However, he must continue using the interlock ignition device for another year.